It's been obvious for quite some time now that the Democrats are moving closer to socialism and even communism as the media, Hollywood, and academia have been trying to make it more acceptable in America. You can go to any college campus in America right now and find acceptance for both socialism and communism and likely you can find students marching around with the hammer and sickle flag. My guess is that if you went to any college campus and marched around with an American flag, you'd receive way more hatred than if you marched around with a hammer and sickle flag. America. Wow, why would you say that? The current leaders of the Democrat Party are far less socialists, like AOC, Tlaib, and Omar. Even Bernie Sanders, who's open about his socialism, was very, very cozy with communists back in his early days. The president should be talking about they're socialists. Do you think the Democrats are making a mistake, tactically, because you're a strategist, of allowing themselves to be branded as socialists, not coming up with some sort of new name. CNN working with the Democrat party to deceive the public? Don't have the rest of the video, but hilariously, the Democrat strategist responded by saying, quote, Democrats should say they stand for inclusion and diversity. She also said that their messaging loses as Republicans because, quote, it's easy to be nasty and spiteful. But they are nasty and spiteful. Some Democrat women call themselves nasty women. I am a nasty woman. If Democrats are all about inclusivity and diversity on a very superficial level, if you don't agree with them, you're pretty much a fascist. But there's no doubt in my mind that the media is going to continue pushing further and further left. They're part of a cabal that includes the Democrat Party, whose goal is to push this country further into socialism and eventually full-blown communism. Perhaps that's why they're so supportive of open borders. As South Americans flood in by the millions, so will acceptance for far-left socialist policies. Ryan Schutz is a United uh, Air Force veteran and Democrat Party watchdog known as Drone Tech Politics on YouTube. For the past 10 years, he's exposed the fake news, bias, and lies by the mainstream media. And although the tech giants have attempted to shut him down, as they've done to all of us, he's still here thanks to his amazing audience. Probably a lot of you watching. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Drone Tech Politics. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. How you doing, brother? Hey, man. Uh, we, you know, the YouTube uh, someone out there has been trying to shut us down all day, man. We got agents uh, posing as Doug, as me going into our uh, our chat rooms and trying to tell people this thing's called off and it's over. <laughs> it's just huh. unbelievable. Yeah. Censorship yeah, I was wondering. On the move, brother. Oh yeah. I mean, I was wondering. I got to thinking yesterday. I'm like. Uh, is this is this gonna get my channel shut down just just broadcasting this live stream but you know what i just figured you know i i gotta keep gotta keep doing what i'm doing and i can't let their their threats and their intimidation stop me and, I, and it won't that's real good man because you know i i've watched i've been here for this whole broadcast and everybody that's come on man it's all about data facts experiences we're not here you know, casting aspersions or saying anything about an entire group of people, any of that nonsense. You know, we're just telling you the facts of what's going on down there and what we suspect is going to be happening at that border when we get down there in January. So when I when I talked to you originally about this, of course, you, like many people, didn't really hesitate to say you wanted to come on and be a part of this. What is, in your experience, what is, what is your take on the southern border how it impacts our country. Where do you see the threats coming from? Give us, give us your perspective on the situation down there. Well, I mean, obviously there's a problem at the southern border, and there has been for a really long time. It's nothing new, which is what makes it so strange that today suddenly it's you know like you were just saying it's racist or it's xenophobic or whatever label list huge list of labels that they can attach to you. Uh, and, and it's all political, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to make political gains at the expense of our security at the southern border. And, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much what what I do, um, not just about the border, but just the media in general, framing things and and their narratives and, and really how they poison the discourse in this country uh, with, with all their lying and uh, the, the fake news that's constantly being churned out there. Um, and the border is just a great example of of how some, that's something that we should all be for. I mean, the government, one of its only mandates that it actually has 
is to secure our borders and protect the country. And, and Trump's trying to do that, just like, you know, past presidents did try to do that, but they, they tried to uh, do it in a way that the media would still love them and give them good coverage. And if you're a Democrat, that's pretty easy. But a, a lot of the things that Trump's doing now aren't new, right? They're, they're things that have been done with past presidents. Things he said have been said by past presidents. And it's just the media literally just lying in some cases, just making things up um, to attack Trump and hurt Trump. And it's, you know, it, it's really when he calls him the enemy of the people, I agree. And I, I've been saying that before Trump even came around, but I agree. And that's one of the reasons, because they will put politics above the security of the country. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, I've uh, pretty much I've directly linked what our media does to what the state run media of North Korea does. They push out nothing but lies, a propaganda, and they say the same key phrases over and over and over again. They repeat Oh, yeah. And it's not just, you know, one channel either. It's multiple networks, multiple anchors, multiple shows. And of course, coordination. And of course, that's coordinated with Democratic leadership. Isn't that convenient? Isn't it convenient when the Democratic leadership comes out with these little taglines, children in cages, children in cages, uh, drinking from toilets, drinking from toilets, and you see it just repeated over and over and over and over and over. Russian collusion, right. Russia collusion, Russia collusion, Russia spy, Russia spy. Right. Right now they're and, saying, and, and, right now one of the things you can see, it, it, sorry if I talk over you, I'm really bad about that. But one, no, just like you're saying, that's going on right now with the uh, in regards to the whole Biden scandal thing in Ukraine and Hunter. They're, they're out there saying, oh, debunked. Uh, um, there's no evidence. It's a conspiracy theory. And you can find that. Uh, I actually just published a video showing that, but you can find that on all the networks. They're all saying the same thing. And, uh, you know, guys like Rush Limbaugh, I'm a Rush baby. I was listening to Rush when I was young. And uh, he's always pointed that out. He's always pointed out how the media, you can find, they're all saying the same thing. And um, if you look back, like, uh, I don't know, back when Obama was president, there has been examples of um, the media and Democrats coordinating uh, and, but of course, it never became big news. But there was a forum called Journalist, and uh, it was used. It was a private forum, and it was used by Democrat officials and uh, politicians and media members. And on that forum, you can find they were trashing people. Who, they were coming up with uh, narratives uh, for defending Obama against his critics. And I think that's what you find typically when there's a Democrat administration. But uh, like you were saying about the kids in cages, uh, you know. Kid, the whole the whole kids in cages thing started with a picture taken during the Obama administration, and uh, you know all this and like what I was saying earlier that all that stuff was going on back then, but for some odd strange reason it wasn't a controversy. Um, I actually found an article fr- written by NPR uh, about talking about the conditions and the facilities when Obama was president. Literally nowhere in the article do they even mention Obama's name, and I actually found the author and called her out on it. And she didn't have a good excuse. Her excuse was that Obama wasn't named in the lawsuit. It's like, well, if if the facilities are directly connected to Trump now, how are they not connected to Obama then? Oh, yeah, I did a video. I'm sure you probably covered this as well. Do you remember when a lot of the mainstream media on the left, they took a video of Border Patrol agents pouring out water that supposedly was left for people yep. that were migrating through the desert and they were destroying water supplies and they blamed it on Trump and his racist policies. Turns out the video was from Obama era. It was all Obama yeah. stuff. And, and, and I remember when that was new. Yeah. To Trump. I mean, that, yeah. that just blatant propaganda and lies. It's unbelievable. And then, well, how about, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, I will say I did see a, I did see a newscast. I wish I would have caught who, who these people were, there were two newscasters who were questioning a Democrat about Biden's son, and they would not let him off, let this woman off the hook. She kept trying to go back to the, no, it was a guy. He kept trying to go back to the same talking points about how it's a conspiracy theory. And they go, whoa, 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 what's a conspiracy theory? It's a fact. It's a documented fact. He was making 50000 a month. That's a fact. You know, exactly. it's a fact that he had no experience in the field in which he was being paid 50000 a month. That is a documented fact. Which part of this is the conspiracy theory? They wouldn't let him off the hook. And so right. all he did was he just kept shifting back to Trump and, and the impeachment inquiry. 
So they, they just can't handle people who come at them with the truth. So they have to pivot. They just right. keep pivoting. Oh, yeah. That, it, it's insane that these people who call themselves like they're the, the, they're the defenders of democracy and truth and justice and all holding truth to power. It's all such a bunch of BS. I mean, uh, like you were just saying, uh, they were on there saying all day on MSNBC and everything that anybody who questions uh, the Hunter Biden uh, connection to the company and Joe's you know, influence in any of that, uh, that they're kooks. It's a conspiracy theory. And I, I found that kind of odd, especially coming off the whole Russia collusion thing and the fact that so much of that's been debunked and yet they still reference it, keep it alive. They still keep using it. Uh, you know, one of the things that they did, uh, you talk about conspiracy theories. They, for, back in uh, 2017, Trump uh, had that conference with, uh, with sheriffs and they were talking a lot about MS-13 and one of the sheriffs asked him a question about being able to detain and then deport MS-13 gang members. And then he goes on to say, oh yeah, these people are animals. And then they took that, the media literally took that little cut, put it out there and said, oh look, he's calling immigrants animals. And if you Google it, you can still to this day find hundreds of articles making the claim. And some of them are worded really weirdly. Like they say, the headline will be, Trump calls some un undocumented immigrants animals. And it's like, well, that's not a false statement, but it's clearly averting the truth of what he actually said. And that's what we're dealing with. It's unbelievable. And these people still try to act like they have some kind of moral high ground. And, you know, and yeah. that happened in 2017. They actually brought it up again in like 20, late 2018. It became this news story all over again. It was on MSNBC. There were big Twitter things about it. It's just, it's crazy. Well, that's why, you know, for me, us going down to the border in January is so important because I want to know what the hell everybody's hiding. I mean, I, I, I can kind of connect dots on the financial corruption of these politicians. The fact that they're probably making a butt ton of money off of all the drug infestation in our country. Um, but there's just, there's just got to be more to what's going on. And I think the impeachment inquiry is a giant diversion away from something. I'm not exactly sure what, um, mm -hmm. because Pelosi was a, completely opposed to impeachment all the way up until like a week and a half ago. And now she's 180 degrees on it. So there's a diversionary tactic here going on. Somebody made a really good point. And I, I, I want to run this by you really quick. Um, a president who has been impeached cannot appoint a Supreme Court justice. And where is RBG? Where is she? She's on her way out the door. And so this may be a push to prevent Trump from getting that next nomination. That's what this could be about. Could be. Sounds like a pretty strong theory. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say that that's pretty, I mean, they obviously don't want to lose another seat. And that's probably pretty high on their list of threats right now. Um, I'd say there's just a laundry list of things. I mean, they, they've been pushing for impeachment since before he was elected. So, I mean, yeah. it can literally be anything, but obviously, yeah, that's a, that's a huge one. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that the chances of that are, uh, could, I mean, he, probably she's going to go, I would think, right? She's not looking so good these days. Well, she's certainly not going to make it another four years. We know that's not going to happen. No. no way. I mean, she's, well, what, 837 years old right now? So we, we're going to believe she's going to make it to 841. She's not going to make it that long. It's not going to happen. No. no. And real quick, just uh, like you were talking about, you know, the trip to the border and, and when to get the truth. Uh, and first of all, I didn't really get a chance, but thank you for inviting me to this and including me. Uh, but, you know, any of my subscriptions that are watching, you guys, you guys know that we constantly are talking about what we can do. And, you know, I always say this, what I'm doing is pretty much what I can do. You know, we, we can, this guy, American Joe, is trying to, to do something. He's actually trying to go out there, put himself on the line, and get some information for all of us. I think that's worth a couple bucks. You know, a lot. so many of you donate to me, and you subscribe to me, and I appreciate it. But, hey, it just a hundred of you or a thousand of you would just give a buck. I mean, that would be huge for them. And uh, I want to see what, what they uncover. I don't know about you guys, but I really want to see. So I, I do hope that happens. And uh, when are you guys actually going to go down there? When's that going to happen? I appreciate all that, Ryan. Uh, we're, we're slated to leave in January if we meet our financial objectives because 
We're taking a team of 14 uh, veterans with us on a 20 day trip. So you can imagine the cost and expense involved with the equipment, the technology behind it. We got to have satellite equipment to get a signal down there. We got to have a lot of security with us. We got to have a lot of camera equipment, sound equipment, not to mention the truck, <laughs> all kinds. And, you know, we got right there's our goal at the top of the screen, guys. Our goal out in the transparent world is 475,000. That gets us there and gets the job done. And at the end of that, we have a documentary film of our journey prepared to go out and get released. Now, here's the issue here. I mean, we have a long way to go, a short time to get there. Me and Douglas combined have 180 some thousand subscribers on YouTube. If if just each one of those people contributed three dollars, we'd be we'd make our goal right. So it doesn't take a lot from everybody. It takes a little bit from a lot of people and and there's so many people that keep saying they want to do something well can you guys give up three bucks can you give up four bucks or five bucks because if enough of you are willing to do that give up a cup of coffee if you're willing to pass a cup of coffee then we can make this happen and not everybody has to i mean I, hey we appreciate those people ryan we got people dropping 500 bucks here 500 bucks here thank you for those people nice you know thank you if they if you've got that thank you um, but a lot of people don't, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck or all, you know, restricted budgets, tight budgets, but you said it exactly right, man. Um, we want to see this trip happen. Now we can do it. If, if, the, if we don't make that full goal, if we make, let's say half that we're going to do it, but we're going to have to do it in a much more, uh, compact way. And we're trying to do the full blown mission, the way we envision it all the way to a documentary. So that's what it's all about. Um, but thank you, Ryan. For, I want to see that. Everything. And you know, yeah, I want to see that know, happen. Every, well, you, you know, if it gets to the documentary level, we're going to invite all of you back people like you to come in and do some interviews for the actual documentary film. Um, because we think it's important. You know, when I started doing YouTube, you've been doing YouTube for a lot longer, Ryan, I don't know if you noticed it, but all, all of us are basically out there on our own, doing our own thing, pushing and trying to fight. And right. I've been telling people bunch of for scattered a long time, but, people. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bunch of voices out like little on little islands by ourselves. Yeah. And uh, the sooner we come together and join forces, join audiences, the better, man. Everybody out there who's watched this, get over to Drone Tech Politics on YouTube and subscribe to his channel. Hit that bell notification. We have to, if we're gonna be standing together and we and we're not just talking the talk and we're actually gonna walk the walk, then why are we not supporting every channel out there? together right yeah the so left has got their shit together and i'm sorry to curse but they, do. they got their stuff they together do. as far as that we need to do the same um you know yeah. i've been i i've wanted to do more so i've been going out there recently uh, over the last year and doing interviews and i plan a lot more <laughs> which is both fun and really hard to do but uh you know that's what i'm trying to do and uh you know we got we got to somehow come together in you know i was talking to uh to you guys about this that you're trying to bring everybody together so because obviously there's power in numbers and uh all of us together working together we can build up a bigger audience we can have a bigger impact and at this point i mean that's all that's going to do it it's it's a dangerous time for us right now and and especially if democrats get power watch out because they're not going to stop with trump they're coming for all of us and eventually i, I really believe this they really want to outlaw or uh, just crush any sort of like opposition to them and, and what they want to do. And you see signs of it all the time. It, it's getting crazier and crazier all the time. So, and, and YouTube, especially the, the closer we get to this election, they're going to be cracking down. My, my channel, you know, I was getting hundreds of subs a week. I went from that and then one month, one month it stops and it's now it's going the other way and I'm like losing hundreds and Hey, it could just be me. People could just be getting tired of me. Uh, but I, I just have a feeling something else is at play uh, that, you know, they've banned or they shut my channel down several times now, demonetize me. And uh, none of those times have I ever gotten an explanation. So that's that's well, what we're at right you're now. Experiencing, you're experiencing the same thing that Douglas Dakota is experiencing. I'm experiencing a lot of people are experiencing. I was trapped at 42,009 for the longest time on subs. They would not let me go past 43. They stuck me there. And then as soon as I did a video with someone else or got a little boost of 100 people, uh, the next day I would lose 100 subscribers. Or I've, I've never, ever, in the early stages of my channel, 
I had four or five months of solid growth, never, ever lost subscribers ever. It was always, it was always a, a uh, net gain of subscribers. I'd lose some, right. but I'd always gain more than I lost. Exactly. And so what, what people have told me is that when they go to their phone on my channel, which is half of my audience uses their phone, or actually I think it's more like three quarters of my audience uses their phone. When they go to my channel, a window would pop up saying unsubscribe or cancel and the cancel button wouldn't work. So they'd be forced to hit the unsubscribe button to clear that little window. And that's hmm. happened. A lot of people have reported that to me. And I bet you if you were to ask your audience, they would tell you the same thing is happening. But you don't know oh, yeah. because they're not going to report that to you. Yeah. I so, mean, uh, I don't know if you see Crowder. You know, he's been talking about how they're blacklisting or, or uh, deranking or whatever you call it. All of his yeah. videos, you search for his videos. Uh, and, and he just recently discovered that if you search for his videos outside of the U.S., I don't know if you saw yeah. that, but then they, they mm -hmm. come up. So, yeah, there's obviously, you know some uh some shenanigans <laughs> going on right now well we got some stuff planned here ryan uh beyond the border command we got some things planned where we're going to be bringing patriot channels together off of this platform onto another platform so that we can uh control our destiny a little bit more so we're going to be talking to you about that going forward so everybody make sure you check out drone tech politics and uh he's on youtube and if you go to bordercommand.com or dronetechpolitics.com, of course, you can visit his website. And we have all of his links over on bordercommand.com. Thank you so much and Ryan, real for your quick, time. Yes, sir. Oh, you're very, real quick before I go, I just want to say, uh, look for October, or, um, I'm sorry, October 16th. I will be attending the uh, CNN Democrat debates here in Westerville, Ohio. So check that out. Right. I will be live streaming. You'll be on your channel doing that. Awesome. October 16th, yeah. guys. And Dustin, before I kick it back to you, buddy, look what I just got. My new fresh supply of firearm guard Ooh. in the mail today. Wow, you got that all from natural, George. All natural. And my wife loves this thing, man. She loves she's, she. I got like six of these, okay? I got the Trump 2020. I got the uh, Second Amendment version. And my wife nice. absolutely loves them. So she stole like three of them for me. So. Those, were the, those were the ones where you use promo code Dustin and you pay double? <laughs> exactly wait a minute i paid double what yeah. <laughs> hey one more thing everybody who's out there we need to reach a goal of twenty thousand dollars before the end of this marathon i think we're down to like seven more hours or six and a half more hours do what you can do if you can donate five ten twenty even more whatever you can do let's get to twenty thousand dollars help us reach this goal of this marathon so that we can push forward and meet the ultimate objective of getting to that border we really appreciate you guys back to you dustin yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Trojak. Appreciate it, man. Looking forward to seeing Thank your you. CNN stuff, and uh, I'll give you a call. We'll hook up on that and see if we can get it pushed out for you.